Year after year, U.S. News & World Report ranks LaGrange College as one of the South's top 10 regional colleges and calls her one of the best values in education. Do they say that just because we have a new library or a hard-fighting football team or fine arts programs that are second to none? No. For nearly 180 years, the people of LaGrange College have made it a great place to get a great education. People make LaGrange College, LaGrange College. Students, alumni, faculty, staff, and friends. From a former student whose words and pictures are seen daily by an estimated 250 million people in 55 countries, to a freshman who gave up a budding career on television to study nursing. Stay with us for the next few minutes as we introduce you to 20 people who make LaGrange College, LaGrange College. On this edition of LaGrange College Presents. LaGrange College Presents. The first of our 20 people who make LaGrange College, LaGrange College, is probably our most famous living alumni, Dean Young. Maybe you don't know his name, but chances are you know some of the characters he brings into homes all over the world every single day. Dagwood Bumstead, his wife Blondie, Alexander Cookie, Mr. Dithers, and Daisy. Dean Young graduated from LaGrange College in 1960 with a bachelor's degree in business. Three years later, he began working with his father, Chick Young, creator of the Blondie comic strip. When his father died in 1973, Dean took over the strip and kept it going. And today, the Bumsteads appear in more than 2,300 newspapers in more than 33 different languages. Anyway, I'm happy, thrilled, and delighted to tell you that yes, I am a graduate of LaGrange College, and I walked in here just a little while ago, and this is my old dorm. My room was right down that hall there. Now, I'm not going to tell you what went on down there, but we did play, <laughs> did play some softball and football back in the field back here. I want to show you one last thing that I think will be interesting to you, and that's the way that I the actual progression of uh, the, the artistic progression of how it, hap how it happens. And here you can see a script that I do. In each panel I describe the action of what's going on with the characters and then I show the dialogue of the characters underneath that. So the artist, my artist John Marshall and his great assistant Frank Cummings, they get it and they turn it into a pencil or a pencil. We, all, we, we do all our work on a computer now. Everything's done on the computer. So when I get the first version of that, I'll look at it and I'll talk to them on the phone and if I have something I want to change, then I'll do it in the, uh, the final ink. Yeah, I hope that I, my presentation is over here, but I hope we're not with the same results that, uh, <laughs> that Dagwood had. <laughs> So now you know about this comic strip, and especially since I'm an LC graduate, I'm hoping that you'll be reading the comics every day. I'm hoping that you'll be reading the Blondie comic every day, especially. <laughs> and don't forget, my room was right down this hall. <laughs> While Allison Grieve was a student here at LaGrange College, she appeared in a number of theater department dramas, in newspaper and magazine ads, and even on the college website. Allison's dream was to become an actress on Broadway. She had the talent, the ambition, and the training. So no one was surprised when she packed up her dorm room right after the 2009 commencement ceremonies and headed straight for the Big Apple. The second of our 20 people who make LaGrange College, LaGrange College, may not be famous yet, but give her time. Allison Grieve. I packed up my dorm room and moved four days after graduation, so I didn't even go home. The first few months are really hard because I didn't know a single person. And um, I tried to go out as much as I could and just kind of experience everything, and it's very scary, but LaGrange? gave me this 
really awesome foundation and I found that I'm very ready to go into the world, go into auditions with a professional background, know what I'm doing, have solid, you know, have my feet solidly planted and be able to just audition with confidence and I think that's probably one of the most important things that you can do is to have confidence and that's basically what LaGrange gave me. I've recently been cast in a um, off-Broadway show. It's called A Night in Vegas. It's so much fun. The direction is great. The, the material is amazing. Uh, it's a 300 seat theater that they sell out. It's a really great chance just to get myself out there and that's what you gotta do when you're first starting out so I'm very excited. Just make sure that your whole heart is in it and if it is you will you will get what you give. Number three on our list of 20 people who make LaGrange College, LaGrange College, is first year student Jasmine Farmer. Jasmine was bitten by the acting bug early on. And when, at age 14, she and her mother moved from Georgia to California, they began making the rounds of the casting directors and television studios. Soon, Jasmine was appearing in shows like iCarly, Everybody Hates Chris, and Hannah Montana. She was even photographed for the cover of the book Chasing Romeo by A.J. Bird. When it came time to choose a college, Jasmine Farmer decided to take a break from show business. She had always been interested in the field of healthcare, and that led her back to her home state and LaGrange College. I chose LaGrange because I knew it was a great place to just focus on school. The class sizes were small and I just really think that I needed that as a college student just to be in a class where I can really focus and get what I need to get done. I really wanted to either do like pediatrics or um, like neato, neonatal care. So just I want to do nursing and work with children. I moved to California in ninth grade to like pursue acting and dance, but mostly acting. And so I used to go out on auditions and I did a little bit of TV and film. I've been on like Nickelodeon shows, so it was cool to go on set and meet with other actors and just, um, you know, shoot scenes and learn really like the different aspects of how the um, entertainment industry runs. So it was really a lot of fun. Now I'm ready for college. <laughs> Another first year student appears on our list of 20 people who make LaGrange College, LaGrange College. Someone who's just as comfortable discussing politics as she is leading the worship service at her church. Meet Chloe Colvin. I am from Dallas, Texas. I just moved here last week and I've lived there for the past 10 years. I originally am from here, so I'm coming back home. I decided to come to LaGrange because, first of all, I think it's beautiful, and second of all, my dad went here, and so I knew it was a great school. Unlike in Texas, where my, my friends and I would just go somewhere, like bowling or something, to have fun, here people are more close-knit groups, like friends stay together for years and years and you hang out at people's houses and I really like that. It's like family and um, we don't really have that, in in, at least not in a big city like Dallas. I mean, I have tons of friends, but not just this close group like I see a lot here and I really like that. I really would like to be a worship leader. Ever since I was a little girl, the biggest dream that I could possibly think of was leading worship. Uh, a friend of mine recommended the contemporary service to me and I came, I came late and was sitting in the very back and afterwards I went and introduced myself to their youth pastor, told him that uh, I came from Gateway Church in South Lake, Texas and that I'd been a worship leader there and he hooked me up with all the worship team and uh, I was leading worship on Monday with them so <laughs> it was just real quick and they've just welcomed me in just like a family it's been awesome. This semester, well, I'm, I'll probably be taking core classes, of course, but I also want to um, start maybe with the choir and uh, do some applied guitar and applied piano. 
Ultimately, um, I'm really torn between music and poli-sci at this point, but I figure as soon as I um, start my classes and stuff, that'll make it easier for me to decide. Uh, just whatever, whatever God wants to use me with is where I'll go with my life. I'm not too worried about it, but this is where I'm supposed to be now, so. A senior education major from South Daytona, Florida, Craig Mobley came to LaGrange to play baseball and found it to be a place that offered more than just an education. It offered support and encouragement. Here, Craig found a place that could help him channel a series of personal struggles into his dream job, working with special needs children. When I was born, I came out with problems. I couldn't talk until I was about six to seven years old. I went to speech pathologist since I was like two, working on blending and trying to pronounce things. And um, my mom got me diagnosed by a doctor and the doctor told her a whole bunch of negative stuff saying like I wouldn't be able to graduate, never talk. And my mom and my dad rebuked it and said, no, that's not gonna be my son. In high school, I was in a program that worked with special ed kids. And um, I knew I wanted to be in education, eventually get into special ed and work with severe and moderate um, handicapped children. Um, Coach Howard found me playing baseball down in Florida. And uh, I'd be my fifth year playing baseball. And I uh, always caught and DH'd, uh, designated hitter. I didn't pass. Couldn't stay in the program last year because I didn't stay, um, meet the criteria. Dr. Yates, she's my advisor, so she spends a lot of time helping me, and and she took the whole year helping me study for the reading and writing part. And my ultimate goal is to end up getting a PhD and open my own clinic and um, in special ed, and just overall just make an impact in um, special needs kids' lives. LaGrange College offers dozens of valuable scholarships to its students every year. One of the most valuable is the Goizueta Foundation Scholarship, designed to help recruit students of Hispanic or Latino origin, students who have demonstrated outstanding leadership skills. Thanks to her Goizueta Scholarship, sophomore Angie Ferrero, number six on our list of 20 people who make LaGrange College LaGrange College, is studying biology and plans to pursue a medical career with a specialty in emergency medicine or orthopedic surgery. I am a Goizueta scholar and it pretty much enables me to go to the school because if I didn't have that scholarship I don't know if my family could afford to go here and I really really wanted to go here. This just kind of fit all the ideals that I wanted in a college, especially that I could play sports here and go to school and do like sorority life and do it all but at a small school. This is my second year playing soccer and if I play lacrosse this year it'll be my second year playing lacrosse and I've never played lacrosse before so it was a great experience. I'm not very hand-eye coordinated so it was a struggle at first but you know we started to get together and play together as a team a little more. I mean I know we didn't have the best record but we had so much fun and we all learned a lot and I mean what more can you ask? I'm a pre-med biology major and I'm pretty sure I'm going to go to medical school. My specialty is between um, emergency room doctor or maybe orthopedic surgery, something along those lines. I've already decided you know to apply to Emory and Medical College of Georgia but I'm also I really want to apply to Johns Hopkins if I can get in there too. That'd be great. My family is originally from Columbia. I was born in the United States. I went for the first time in uh, two years ago for Christmas. And I'd never been before, and it was definitely an eye-opener. That was the first time I met one of my grandmothers and my two of my uncles. Like, we went to a church, and I found out that I was related to the preacher and half of the congregation. <laughs> so I'm definitely very proud to share my Hispanic side um, with all of my friends, because it's it's not something that they're used to. In the spring, the soccer team, we're going to Spain for spring break. Uh, it's kind of, it's still, we're trying to get prices and everything down, but um, we're going to try to see a professional team play and go play against some of the smaller clubs over there and then just go tour Barcelona and that would be fantastic. Yeah, and my parents want to go too because we're going to be like the translators. I mean, it's, it's their excuse at least, they want to go to Spain. 
Next on our list of 20 people who make LaGrange College, LaGrange College, is one of its most respected professors. Dr. Kevin Shirley is passionate about teaching. Since his campus arrival in 1998, he's given history students opportunities to do things they never imagined. And in a world where bigger is always better, Dr. Shirley appreciates one of the key advantages that LaGrange College offers its students, small classes where everyone can participate. Why do I like teaching here? Here is not an institution with 72,000 full-time enrolled students. Here is a classroom that's really big if it seats 25. And if it seats 25, that means you're going to get to know them. You're going to communicate with them and to them in a way that you can't at a bigger place. And I think to a degree and with a level of quality that you won't experience 98% of the time at big mega state U. You know here, you know when they're getting it, you know when they're not getting it, you know when they're growing and you know when they're stagnating, you know. And that's the great, that's the great thing about working here. I think you do have to be open. I think you have to be accessible. You've got to, you've got to make students understand and believe, believe and have confidence in the idea that you are there to help and that you are there to encourage and that you are there to challenge, but that you're there. And I think how you do that is by being passionate in what you do. If, if, if a professor gets excited, students will get excited. First year students, second year students, anybody, once they know that they can believe in you and they can believe that what is going on inside that classroom is important, then wherever their passion is, that's where they're going to be. They're going to find it, whether it's the scientist or whether it's the mathematician or whether it's the artist or whether it's the historian. Ashley Poteet wanted a career that would stitch together her love of history with her passion for art and design. She found it in the theater. When Ashley joined the LaGrange College Department of Theater Arts in the fall of 2010 as costume designer and assistant professor, she had to hit the ground running. Not only was she faced with organizing thousands of items in the Price Theater costume shop, her first big show would be The Cherry Orchard, a production that required 19th century period costuming for a cast of 16. I actually started off as a carpenter and then as a scenic artist so I was doing things with screwing things together and painting things and actually at first I was forbidden to enter the costume shop. The first costume designer I worked with wouldn't let me touch anything and it wasn't until I was an undergrad several years later that I actually started to sew a little bit and I made a felt hat and it was kind of fun and then actually um, one of my other interests is history and that was something that I really explored in undergrad and I realized that costume design sort of combines my love of design and art and creating this new world with actually researching things and getting to discover historic people and events and how those shaped certain time periods so I got to combine the two. Well Cherry Orchard is uh, definitely a huge show and it's um, not only is it a challenge for me but also for this department it's just a very large cast ideally whenever you do a costume design it's sort of a third is rented or purchased a third is pulled from your stock and a third is built um, for this show I've actually managed to sort of stay with that. So for the ones that we're building, uh, I'm doing a combination of things. I'm either buying patterns and building from those, or I'm actually having to draft patterns. So I start out with a big piece of paper and the actor's measurements, and I draft out patterns to fit them, and then I make a mock-up out of cotton. I fit that on them, and then I then take that and redraft the pattern to the new size, and then I get the real fabric and I build that. So there are actually um, several pieces in the show that will be from the ground up, and some students are actually building their own costumes that way. This is fun for me, uh, but when I'm not here sewing, um, I do a lot of reading. Uh, I like to hike, and so I'm very happy to be in this area. It's 
good hiking all year round as opposed to, I just came from Las Vegas, so in the summer you sort of had to stay inside or burn, which I do easily. Uh, so a lot of hiking and it's a good area for that. Um, we just got a dog, so I take her on the hikes and she's enjoying that. Ed Russ is the LaGrange College Panthers freshman quarterback. It's not an easy job, but his coaches say that Ed is highly motivated. Here, Ed talks about the pressures of performing on the gridiron and in the classroom. LaGrange Panthers! I'm Ed Russ, quarterback for the Grange Panthers. The Grange College football program is phenomenal. It, the staff is awesome. And coach Mooney is a great man. You know, he's a great coach. I think he knows what he's talking about. And I'm honored to play for him every day. Being a freshman quarterback is it can be very difficult for people who aren't ready to be a college student. If you're not focused in the books first, then you can't be focused on the field. You have to be driven. You always have to be a leader. You have to lead by example. You can't verbalize what you do. Like, you got to prove what you do. Like, you're a quarterback, so that automatically you're going to have pressure on you. You're the guy. And to balance that out with schoolwork and just getting used to being away from home, it can be difficult, but if you, like, if you are focused and you're willing to do it and willing to adapt to it and learn how to manage your time and you'll, you'll be all right as a freshman quarterback. It's a job I love to do. Ed Russ and his teammates stir up plenty of Panther spirit during football season. And next on our list of 20 people who make LaGrange College LaGrange College is someone else who knows all about Panther spirit. She's Karen Hodnett. An LC cheerleader from 1973 to 1975, and a member of the homecoming court in 1974. Talking to Mrs. Hodnett, you get a feel for what it was like to live on campus during the 70s, a time when dinner after the big game cost $2, and basketball was king. Life on the hill in the early, uh, early to mid-70s was very casual and relaxed. Everybody knew everybody. The campus was small enough that even the townies who came to the hill every day knew all the residents on the hill. Um, and it was uh, the camaraderie and the friendships were, were bonds that last and even until this day. Cheering for the Panthers. Basketball was the sport on the hill, and on Tuesday nights and Saturday nights, if there's a home game, that was the place to be. We were very competitive in the GAIC conference at the time, and uh, were on the brink of national championship my sophomore year, and had an unfortunate end of the season loss that knocked us out of the competition. Really was a crushing thing. We were all, we were all packed and ready to go to Kansas City. You know, all, all but everything in the suitcase. Uh, we did not get to go, but we did, we were always conference champions. Always conference champions, as it went during my era anyway. Uh, we were huge rivals with West Georgia College at the time, and we took as many fans as we could to Carrollton and filled their stands if we had a game there. And they likewise did the same when they came to to LaGrange, they brought a caravan and filled it up. And um, that rivalry was huge. Coach Williamson was our, not only our basketball coach, he was the assistant at first when Coach Mariotti was still there and Coach and Mrs. Mariotti lived right across the street. So that was another family that you belonged to once you became part of, of that particular group. Coach Williamson used to challenge the trainers, the players after the game if you could make a milkshake shot, you could get extra money to go eat. And the milkshake shot had to be taken from midcourt, and you had to ring the basket from midcourt, just a big jump shot. And uh, so, you know, there'd be those who'd take on the challenge, and then there'd be those who'd go, oh, I don't think so, I don't think I can get it, so I won't even try. But it was a lot of fun just to be out there and, you know, just sling the ball at the basket and see what you could do. But yeah, that's... Um, that's something I remember fondly was that you didn't have to have a pep rally to have spirit. You, it was just built into the campus. 
The Servant Leadership Program at LaGrange College helps students, staff, and faculty grow as individuals, helps them become better servants of the community and each other. Campus leader Joseph Strickland introduces us to some students and alumni who have dedicated themselves to making a difference. It all starts the moment you arrive on campus with the first week service project. Freshmen work in the community painting houses, planting community gardens, mentoring children, doing work for seniors, and working in soup kitchens. And all along the way, lives are changed. We have a lot of religious groups on campus right now. And um, like Wesley and FCA, and um, this year we're all trying to like, get them all to work together and be something like a whole unified body of Christ right now. But there's a lot of things going on on campus that involve service and involve um, you know environmental cleanup and conservation. And we have a great recycling program here. You know we finally got recycling in the dorms, which is wonderful. The Panther Toy Store um, is an organization started here at the college by a group of students back in 2003. Our mission is to go out and buy toys and create a mini little toy store for Christmas for the low-income LaGrange community. I think last year we fundraised about $1,500 to $2,000 for the toy store and just makes me humble to see that I can go out and help people um, even if it's just by buying a couple of toys for the kids. What I'm actually going to do with my degree is I'm going to uh, go to the police academy after college and then I'm going to apply for Secret Service. I had a wonderful opportunity to attend Duke Divinity School for my seminary training. And then um, two years ago, was called by the cabinet and the bishop to move here to Glenn and to Emory University. And so here I am. And so now I serve as the senior associate pastor and one of the campus ministers to Emory University and love it. When you purchase a pair of shoes, a pair is sent to a child in need anywhere around the world. It's not just, it's not just Africa, it's in Uganda. I mean, it's. It's in Brazil, like it's everywhere, and it's really awesome because they're preventing podoconeosis, which is the foot disease. Go back to school is really hard for single mom. I got three children, I got two in the college, and I got one start this year in the college. Sometimes they request my time, it's, uh, especially when you have to cook. They call me, <laughs> Mama, you want to cut today? I say, no, because I'm studying. For most students, I think the one-on-one -on -one contact and the small um, classroom sizes that, we've, that we have helps. And now that we have just gotten a simulator, that's going to make a big difference with our training also in our clinical lab. Um, so I had heard about this internship uh, through John Lawrence and, and Jared Ragland, who worked at the White House, uh, working with the photography staff there. And then uh, about a week left of my internship, I got a phone call to come down to the West Wing and uh, was offered a full-time position at the White House. They sent FBI agents down to my hometown um, in Dalton, Georgia, and also down here to LaGrange to um, talk to all my friends, talk to people I knew, talk to my professors, talk to the faculty and staff here at the college. Working at the White House as a photo editor and a photographer, our schedule revolved around the presidents. An example of, of schedules changing at the last minute, I was out Friday night with a group of friends and, and got a phone call from the White House saying that I needed to cover the vice president the next morning. And um, after, the, after the interview was over, the vice president called me over and asked if I had any plans for the rest of the day. So I said, no, sir. He's like, okay, good. He's like, how would you like to go out with me and my family? We're going to take the grandkids out on a boat ride. Um, so I ended up spending the, the day with him and his family um, out on the boat. Vice President, so it was, it was a very memorable experience. You see that on a banner now? I really think that's what LaGrange House is all about, transforming life. But I, I think more than just we transform our students here, I hope LaGrange College take the motto even further from our institution, faculty, student, and staff together, transforming life that around us in this community. So uh, together, that's pretty much that's what education is about. You know, we're not in it for ourselves, but we're in it for the community for the society to elevate the entire society so uh, hopefully that's what college in the future can be recognized as that. Without caring people no organization or company or school can hope to make a positive difference in this increasingly cynical world. Now if anyone asks you why US News and World Report ranks LaGrange College one of the South's top 10 colleges you can tell them 20 reasons why.